All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Week 14 Betting Guide for the NFL. I'm Blake from Blake and Vish Sports. Join with me is Nick Nessos, who's a sports statistician. And we do have another guest today, special guest. We'll uh, mention that and bring him in in a little bit. But for today's agenda, we have a Week 13 recap. We have our Week 14 game picks and matchups, who we think's winning, our three best bets of the week, two games you should not be touching with a six-foot pole, moonshots. Like I said, a new segment, Big Facts, coming your way in a little bit. And then we also have our locks. These are certified to hit. It's free money. And let's get into the recap of last week. All right. So for last week, we had Tennessee minus six. Unfortunately, they did not win by six. They did not win at all. The Browns pulled it off. I don't know who thought the Browns were going to be the Titans. Maybe someone out in the middle of nowhere, Colorado. I have no idea. But the Titans did not cover that spread. Next, we have Philadelphia Green Bay over 47. This was a very rough one for us because the total was 46. Jake Elliott, the kicker for the Eagles, missed an extra point. That would have been a push. But also Mason Crosby for the Green Bay Packers also missed an extra point. The It should have been 48. It should have been over. It wasn't. It was rough. It beat us up. That's okay because the rest of ours hit. We had Washington plus 9.5. That hit. That was easy. That was one of the last games of the week. We had Green Bay over one and a half first half touchdowns. They scored two touchdowns. That hit. That was easy. We had Jacksonville plus 14 and a half. They were up early on the Vikings. They could have won this game. But like I said, they don't know how to win. They know how to lose. They didn't lose by two touchdowns. They even went to overtime, lost by six points. That puts us at 11 and nine. But wait, a moonshot hit. For the first time on this show, one of our moonshot picks hit. Blake chose the Detroit Lions and the Cleveland Browns to win, and they both did. Those odds were plus 655. I don't know if you took it. I don't know if you took our moonshot seriously, sure. but you sure. should take them seriously. So next this week, we hope you hit our moonshots. All right, now we're going to get into our game-by-game -game picks for this week. All right, and then the first game we have is going to be the Rams and the Patriots. So I think the Rams are winning. Nassos has the Patriots. Jared Goff and McVay are facing against Cam Newton and Belichick. It's a Super Bowl rematch Thursday night. It should be a close game. Um, it does have some playoff implications as well. Next, we have the Vikings. They are currently 6-6. Six and six. They are in a playoff position right now. And they are taking on the Buccaneers, who Blake likes to call Tampa Bay. They are 7-5. and five. Dalvin Cook faces off against a stingy run defense as both teams are still fighting for that wild card position. This is a very big game. There's only a few weeks left of the playoffs. There is that extra wild card spot this year. We'll see what happens. This is for a tiebreaker as well. Next game we got is going to be the 6-6 six and six Arizona Cardinals versus the 5-7 and seven New York Giants. The Giants are red hot, coming off a big win against the Seahawks as Colt McCoy was gunslinging against Russell Wilson, and the Arizona Cardinals have been ice cold recently, and they might be falling out of the playoff picture, while the Giants, well, they're first in their division right now at 5-7, and seven, so them and the football team are going to be um, dueling it out to see who can get that top position in the NFC East and host a playoff game in the winter. Next, we have the Chiefs versus Miami. The Chiefs are currently 11-1, and one, almost lost to Denver. I thought Denver had a chance. They didn't win, but it was close. Miami's 8-4, and four, led by rookie Tua. The Kansas City Chiefs are hunting down the top spot in the AFC. They're, the Steelers lost. The Chiefs have a chance. They're going for that spot right now, while the Dolphins are just trying to win the AFC East because they're close to the Bills. We'll see if they can catch the Bills. I think they'll make the playoffs. I don't think they'll win the division. We'll see what happens when they play a really good team in the Chiefs this week. All right, next game we got is going to be the 8-4 and four Tennessee Titans versus the 1-11 Jacksonville Jaguars. Derrick Henry and the Titans are looking to recover from a loss to the Browns, while the Jaguars are trying to play spoiler to the Titans' playoff hopes. Um, we're going to talk about this game in a little bit, but we think Derrick, Hon Derrick Henry and James Robinson will be a good matchup, and we'll see who can outrun the other. Next, we have Dallas, who is 3-9. They're playing the Bengals, who are 2-9-1. This is an interesting one. Andy Dalton is returning to face against his former team in the Bengals, and they are both fighting for a top prospect next year because neither of them probably really have too good of a chance of making the playoffs. The Bengals have no chance. Dallas would need a, mer a miracle to win their division. Next, we got the 4-8 and eight Houston Texans versus the 5-7 and seven Chicago Bears. 
the horrid, the poorest, the bona fide scrub Chicago Bears have six in a row. Well, Sean Watson and company have been playing well since the firing of Bill O'Brien. Next, we have Denver. Drew Locke returned last week. He looked pretty good. They're four and eight. They're playing Carolina, who is also four and eight. The story here is all pro running back Christian McCaffrey is returning to the lineup, and they will face he will face the injury riddled Broncos. Christian McCaffrey has been out a high majority of the season. We'll see what he can do. He's one of the best running backs in the NFL, and I think he's going to play a great game. Next, we have the zero and twelve New York Jets versus the eight and four Seattle Seahawks. Uh, this this game's interesting. The Jets just fired Greg Williams, their defensive coordinator, after some very questionable play calling against the Raiders last week. And the Seahawks are coming off to a loss to the Giants, and they're still pushing for that top seed in the NFC West. We should see how this game plays out. Next, we have the Colts. They're eight and four. They're playing the Raiders, who are seven and five. The Raiders barely beat the Jets last week, while the Colts. They're looking good this year. I think they could still win their division. We'll see what happens. The Raiders, they're very inconsistent. I don't know what's going on with them. We'll talk more about this game later as well, and that's it for this matchup. Next, we have the 5-7 and seven football team versus the 5-7 and seven San Fran 49ers. The football team just took down the undefeated Steelers, and they're looking to stay hot as they travel to California to take on the Niners. This should be a good one. Mullins versus Alex Smith. Alex Smith playing against his former team, the Niners. Let's see how this one plays out. Next, we have the Saints, who are 10 and 2. They're most likely still without Drew Brees this week. And we also have the Eagles. They're 3 8 and 1. They have benched Carson Wentz. Jalen Hurts is getting his first career start, and he's going to take on Taysom Hill. We'll see how Jalen Hurts plays. I'm excited for this one. I think he has potential, and I don't think he's going to turn it over as much as Carson Wentz does. It's hard to turn it over as much as Wentz does. And the next game we have is the 4 8 Atlanta Falcons versus the 3 and 9 Los Angeles Chargers. Matt Ryan and Justin Herbert are facing off as the Chargers look to recover from a beatdown as both teams are looking forward to adding a top prospect this spring. All right. Now we have the Green Bay Packers. They're 9 and 3. They're our team. They're playing the rival Detroit Lions, who are 5 and 7. Aaron Rodgers threw his 400th career touchdown pass last week and went to Devontae Adams, and he's going to be taking on veteran Matthew Stafford, who Aaron Rodgers has a lot of respect for. Stafford's a good quarterback, but the Packers will get it done. MVP candidate Rodgers at that. And the next game we have is the 11-1 Pittsburgh Steelers versus the 9-3 Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen and Big Ben are facing off as the Steelers are looking to retain the top spot in the AFC while the Bills have been red hot. Bills are still pushing for the AFC East, while the uh, AFC North is getting pretty heated as the Browns are catching up and not too far behind the Steelers. This game will have some serious implications this winter. Okay, and our last game of the week is the Baltimore Ravens at 7-5, and five, playing against the Cleveland Browns at 9-3. and three. Cleveland had a great win last week. It went against a team above 500. And Baker and Lamar will face off in this AFC North divisional rivalry as both teams are hoping to secure wild card spots because the Browns, even though they're nine and three, are in the same division as the Steelers, who are eleven and one. It doesn't seem like they'll be able to catch them. So that's it for this week's matchups. You can see our picks right here on this graph. And now we're going to get into everyone's favorite part: the best bets. All right, our first bet, bet, best bet this week. The Indianapolis Colts minus two and a half points against the Las Vegas Raiders. So when looking at the turnover battle, that will be a huge factor as it is in any game. But the Colts have a huge advantage. They're really good at keeping the ball, forced fourth least amount of turnovers, and they take it away as well. Their defense has been frontlined by the acquisition of DeForest Buckner. Darius Leonard has been really good still. And Xavier Rhodes, is he back? Rhodes are closed. Maybe, maybe not. They're set the seventh most way. So in really good at win the turnover battle this year. Uh also when you're looking at the Raiders, they just got smacked recently by the Falcons. They lost by 37. And against the Jets, they hardly beat them. It took a miracle play as Henry Ruggs had a deep, I think it was 46 yard touchdown against uh, single coverage. Greg Williams called an all-out blitz, cost him cost him his job, or at least was one of the main reasons of it. Uh, so, yeah, they've been pretty inconsistent. 
We made a mistake. We bet on the Raiders a couple weeks ago. It didn't work out. We're not making the mistake this week. We're betting against the Raiders. That's why we have Colts minus two and a half. The Raiders have the 28th ranked defense. That's terrible. The Colts have won three of their last four games. That's fantastic. The Colts are going to win, and they're going to win by more than two points. This is a good bet this week. All right. Next game we have is the Texans and the Bears. Texans at minus one and a half is what we like. As I previously mentioned, the Bears are on a six-game losing streak. Matt Nagy's undoubtedly on the hot spot. Their offense is bad. And on the other hand, Deshaun Watson, who they should have drafted a few years ago, he's been playing stellar this year. 3,300 yards and a 24-6 to TD to interception ratio. If his team was winning more games or he was on someone else, I guarantee you he'd be in the top as a top five person for that MVP conversation. Also, since the Texans came off a bye, they are 3-0. and That's undefeated against teams that are under 500. The Bears are a team that are under 500. Trubisky throws less than 200 yards on game on average. Less than 200 yards, and also he's had five starts this year, and he has five interceptions. That means he throws an interception every single time he plays in a game, and that is very bad. So that's why we have Texans minus one and a half. Basically, all they have to do is win the game. All right, so for this next best bet, we have the Kansas City Chiefs first half money line. All that means is they have to be winning by halftime. And when looking at the Chiefs roster this year, it's star studded and the statistics back that up. They have the number two offense and number six defense by points. So they're scoring a lot and then their defense is also holding the other team back even during garbage time. And looking at the Dolphins' strength on offense, they they like to pass the ball. They have a lot of attempts, and the Chiefs are good at defending the pass. So look for that Chiefs Matt T, Chiefs strength versus Dolphins strength. Okay. Also, the Chiefs have the least amount of turnovers. They control the ball. Mahomes does not throw interceptions, and they do not fumble. And on defense, they have the seventh most takeaways. They take the ball away from the other team. They always have the ball. Their time possession is fantastic. The Dolphins have the 25th ranked third down offense. That's not good. And the Chiefs have the second best. That's very good. The Chiefs are going to win this game. They're also going to be winning the first half. This is a great bet for this week. Now we're going to talk to you about the games you should not bet on. Stay away. All right. The first game you should not be touching This is actually a Monday night game. I know it's tempting to bet Monday night, only game on. You want to put some money down? Don't do it. Just don't do it. It's going to be the Baltimore Ravens versus the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland's coming off a very big win, and it really wouldn't be a surprise if they beat the Ravens. But also, hey, the Ravens, they're going to be playing desperate. They're getting players back from injury. Lamar Jackson is still a beast. Just don't bet on this one, guys. Come on. Another game that you need to stay away from is the Buffalo Bills and the Pittsburgh Steelers. I've been saying all year the Bills are a great team. I don't know how good the Steelers are. They're, I mean, their record says they're 11-1, but they just lost to a team that doesn't even have a name. The Steelers learned how to lose, though, and now that they know how to lose, they don't like losing. They don't want to lose. And the Bills, they're a very good team, and they're looking for a big-time win. Beating the Steelers is a big-time win. This one could go either way. Stay away. Do not bet on this game. That's what we got for you. Do not bet on these games. Now we're going to talk about our moonshots. Speaking of moonshots, Blake's hit last week. You're going to want to pay attention during this segment. This is serious stuff. All right. So hit last week. This week, looking for the same. I got the football team money line in a parlay with the Vikings money line. I could honestly see both of them winning. I know Minnesota is playing uh, Tampa Bay in Tampa Bay. They're they're uh they're working on their chemistry. They just got off a bye, fresh off a bye. But you know, Dalvin Cook is a beast, and they've been both teams have been red hot. Don't sleep on this one, guys. Don't sleep. My moonshot is the New England Patriots. They play tomorrow. I think they're gonna win. They're gonna win. They're playing the Giants. Bet both these money lines. The Giants are a good football team. Yes, they are. The Giants are the best team in their division. They just came off a win against the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks have a terrible defense, but the Seahawks have a fantastic offense, and the Giants outscored them. That's saying something. Plus 566. This is a good bet. You're going to want to consider this one. Now, guys, I previously mentioned we got a new segment. Big facts. We're going to introduce the man who's coming in. His name is Nolan George, good friend of ours, very knowledgeable. 
on the topic at hand. Knows a lot about Andy Dalton. Big fan of his. Nolan, uh, you, you said you had some big facts. What what are they exactly? What are the big facts for Andy Dalton, Cowboys, Bengals? We got the big facts. Thanks for the intro. Excited to be here, boys. Uh, so as stated, the big facts are taking an in-depth look at the cowboys Bengals game. Off the bat, this is a must-win for the Cowboys. If they don't win, simply put, they're not making the playoffs, and that's a fact. On the defensive side of the ball, these teams, they both suck. That's a fact. Um, and as we all know, this game, it's going to come down to the offenses. Fact. Uh, in terms of the offenses, the receiving core from both teams, respectable. Both sides of the ball, very good. An even matchup. In terms of the running back situations, Ezekiel Elliott versus Giovanni Bernard, as Joe Mixon has been ruled out. Fact. Zeke has the upper hand, and he also has stats going his way. Zeke, the last time out against the Bengals, ran for 134 yards on 15 carries, and yes, that is a fact. However, the real matchup to pay attention to to this game is going to come down to the QBs, and as pictured, we got man on the right, Brandon Allen, versus the 007 assassin, the Red Rifle, Andy Dalton making his return to Cincinnati for the first time since being traded. In terms of touchdowns interception ratio, Dalton has the upper hand. Fact. In terms of passer rating, Dalton has the upper hand. Fact. In terms of completion percentage, you guessed it, Dalton has the upper hand. Fact. Um, and in terms of the X Factor facts, which player looks better in Bengals uniforms? Oh, I don't know. No, I do know. It's Dalton by a landslide. He looks electric in him. Does the aesthetic of Dalton pair with Bengals jerseys look electric? I just said it. That's a fact. It absolutely does. And for the biggest fact of them all, the Cowboys are going to win. The big facts bet. Hammer the Cowboys money line currently at 190. Get your bets in. The facts don't lie. Back to you, boys. Thank, Thank you, Nolan. Nolan. Those facts are um... – they were huge. They were enormous. Great magnitude. Thank you for that. Now, that was Nolan George's lock. Uh, he has the Cowboys money line. He's slamming them. But me and Nick have some locks this week, too. And all I'm going to say is it's free money right now. So I'm having the New England Patriots plus nine and a half. This is an alternative spread. So the actual uh, spread right now is plus five. I took the alternative spread. You get a little um, more wiggle room with the points. So New England has won four of the last five and only lost by over 10 points twice this season. Twice. And those were to teams that are better than the Cardinals. The Cardinals of uh, – or sorry, the Rams. The Rams. They play the Rams. And the Rams, you know, they just lost to the Niners. They've been playing close games. I like the Patriots, and that's my lock for the week. Slam it. Slam that lock. Mm -hmm. All right, my lock is the New York Jets plus 18 and a half. This is an alternate spread. The Jets almost beat the Raiders last week, and the Seahawks lost to the Giants. The Giants. I know the Giants are a good team, but so are the Seahawks. The Jets just fired their defensive coordinator. Great move. The dude blitzed all his entire defense when they could have won the football game. He's gone. The Jets can not win this game, but they'll be within 18 and a half. That is so many points. Bet this lock and you'll be printing money. It's like the Federal Reserve. You're going to be printing your own money, as much money as you want. Just put all your money on this bet. You're going to, the Jets are not going to lose by more than 18 and a half points. And you're like the Federal Reserve. This bet will not disappoint. Ladies and gents, that's just free money right there. It, it really is. Guys, thanks for watching this episode of our betting guide. Come back next week for a recap. Uh, we're going to be recapping a whole lot of things, some big facts, see how factual they are. And thanks for uh, coming by, guys.